Hello and welcome to lesson 7.2 in the Python tutorial series. In this lesson we're going to be looking at logical operation which builds ex on exactly what we did in lesson 7.1. In lesson 7.1 we took a look at what an assignment operator is. That's simply a symbol in Python that instructs Python to assign a, a value to a variable and comparison operators, which were symbols that told Python to check the condition or to compare two numbers together and return a Boolean value, either true or false. Logical operators are a natural step to use with comparison operators, and logical operators just allow you to compare more than one thing at a time. Logical operators are the letter, uh, the words or, and, or not, and we're going to look at how to use those in our programs. So here we go. This is lesson 7.2, take two. Um, I, I actually recorded this video maybe 10 minutes ago, and I had the mute on the microphone for the entire thing. So I, I'm going to be doing this again, and hopefully I don't forget to add anything, but uh, Without any further ado, here we go with logical operators. And, and you know, just one other thing, apologies for the fact that I, I know this is kind of a boring lesson and a boring topic. One of the things that I don't like about it is it's kind of taken out of context a bit. And the skills are important, but I don't have a good application for it yet until we pair it with what we're doing in Lesson 8 and Lesson 9. So, you know, bear with me, just make sure you understand this and know that while it may not seem like it could have a ton of value just yet, we are going to pair it with some other things that are going to make it a powerful programming concept. So over here in my Python shell, um, in order to use logical operators, I'm going to need some values. And I'm going to set these values in, in into variables. So I'm going to set grade equal to 80 and grade to equal to 70. So now I have two variables, grade and grade two, set two values of 80 and 70. Just as a quick review for comparison operators, I might type, type something like grade is greater than or equal to 50. The way Python is going to interpret this, the first thing it will do is take the variables and get a numerical, or get a value form. It doesn't necessarily have to be numerical. So in this case, grade equals 80, so grade will get replaced with 80, and Python is going to ask, is 80 greater than or equal to 50? And that's going to return a value of true. You know, likewise, if I said grade is less than 40, we're going to replace the variable grade with 80 and say 80 is less than 40, which of course evaluates to a false statement. Now I'm going to start with the not logical operator, mainly because I just want to cover it. It's but of the three, of not, and, or, or, it is going to be the one that you use the least. And I haven't found a ton of practical use for it in the programs that I write. The or command is going to return the opposite of the comparison that you did. So we looked at grade is greater than or equal to 50. That is true. So if I say not grade is greater than or equal to 50, same thing happens, but this time it's in parentheses. So the first thing that's going to happen is grade will get a value of 80. 80 is greater than or equal to 50, which evaluates to true. And then we're going to apply the not, and so this will read not true. And if something is not true, it is false. Similarly, if I were to say not grade is less than 40, 80 is less than 40, which is false and not false evaluates to true. So the not keyword simply gives you the opposite of the Boolean value that Python would have returned. If it returned a true, it will change it to a false, and if it would have ret returned a false, it's going to return a true. That's the not keyword. You might find uh, a couple times where using it is appropriate, but that's gonna be the most rare of the comparison operators that you'll be using. Far more important than the not command, at least to me, is the and and the or commands. I'll use these in just about every single program that I write. 
And the way they work is, we'll start with and. In order for an and expression, or an and logical operation to return to true, every single expression has to evaluate to true. So what does that mean? Let's say I have grade is greater than or equal to 50, and grade 2 is greater than or equal to 50. In this case, I have two expressions. We're going to evaluate each one individually. So we're going to start with this and say grade is great, greater than or equal to 50. That's going to evaluate to true. And grade 2 is greater than or equal to 50. That's going to evaluate to true. And if the first expression is true and the second expression is true, then the entire expression evaluates to true. The thing about the logical operators is they can compare 10 things at once they're still only going to return a Boolean value. It's going to return either true or false for the entire statement. If I were to type grade is greater than or equal to 50 or grade 2 is greater than or equal to 50, that would return true as well because both of them are true. The only difference is or is going to look for one or the other to be true. So let's change that expression up a little bit and say grade is greater than or equal to 50 and grade 2 is less than 40. This first part of the expression is going to evaluate to true. The second expression right here is going to evaluate to false. Grade 2 is not less than 40. Because of that, we get true and false. Since both do not evaluate to true, that entire expression evaluates to false. If we change the AND to an OR, grade is greater than or equal to 50, or grade 2 is less than 40. Oops. This will evaluate to true. This will evaluate to false. And we get the expression true or false. And since one or more of the expressions evaluates to true, that is going to return a value of true. And, and that's really all there is to logical operations. It doesn't have to be done with numbers, as in the case with grades. Just like we did with comparison operators, you can use strings as well. So I could uh, set variable name equal to Steve again, and location equal to Arizona. And I could ask name is equal to, or is name equal to Steve. Remember, equals equals is the comparison operator. See if two values are equal to one another. So Steve, the name equals Steve, and location equals Arizona. Oh, this is almost, this is the biggest mistake that I always make, and I'm, I'm going to make it just so that you can see. I have location equals Arizona. You can see right here. This is a very common mistake that I make in programming. And I'm going to get the syntax error. Can't assign to operator. I do this all the time. Remember that the comparison operator, see if two values are equal to one another, is equals equals. If you just put one equal sign, this expression is trying to set location equal to a value of Arizona. But because it's part of a Boolean, or because it's part of a logical operation, it's going to cause an error. So if you see this can't assign to operator error in your statements, that's a big one, and the faster you start going, the more I tend to make that error. So let's go ahead and correct that. Name is equal to Steve, and location is equal to Arizona. Python is going to evaluate this and say, is name equal to Steve? That is true. Location is equal to Arizona. That is also true. Therefore, that whole expression is going to evaluate to true. If I were to say name is equal to let's call it Marcus again, or location equals Arizona. It's going to check this first expression, say name is not equal to Marcus, false, or location equals Arizona, true. This is false or true, and since one or more of the expressions being evaluated returns a value of true, this entire expression returns a value of true. Before we end Lesson 7.2, I want to clear my screen here and give you 
at least something to think about with uh, comparison and Boolean and logical operators. Um, again, we're not going to do anything too super exciting with these just yet, but I'm going to come over here to my uh, Python shell and I'm going to set some variables. I'm going to have a variable called sword and I'm I'm going to change I'm going to set it equal to false. The armor is going to be equal to false. Gold is going to be equal to false and key is going to be equal to false. When you're setting variables to true or false, they're boolean val variables, but do keep this in mind. You have to capitalize true or false. You'll notice that false turned that orange color. When I type true with a capital T, it also turns that orange color. If I were to type, say, sword equals true, I'm going to get an error. True is not defined. True with a capital T is the Boolean value that says an expression is true. So if I type sword equals true, sword is going to return a value of true. When I type true with a lowercase t, Python does not evaluate that to be a Boolean value. It evaluates that to be a variable named true. And since I haven't defined a variable called true yet, it's going to return an error. So if you're trying to set a variable equal to either a value of true or false, it's very important that you capitalize only the first word. It'll turn that orangey color. That's how you know you've got a Boolean value. So I'm going to go ahead and set sword back equal to false. And so I've got sword, armor, gold, and key. Where I would apply this in a game is right now, I know there's a sword, armor, gold, and key in my game, and right now the user does not have any of those in their inventory. There are more advanced ways to do inventory. We'll definitely get there, but just think of it like this now. Does the user have a sword? No, that's false. They don't. Do they have armor? That's false. Do they have gold? That's false. Do they have a key? That's false. So I'm going to create a check to see if they can get into a room that's, you know, guarded by a city guard. And I'm going to say, in order to get by the city guard, the first thing they would, they would want to have is a key to the room. So I'm just going to type key. Now, that returns a value of false. The user did not get through the door. Okay, the next thing they might want to have is gold to bribe the city guard. So I say, the first thing I want to check is do they have a key? If they don't, or gold. First thing Python's going to do is check key. Key is equal to false. It's then going to check gold. That's equal to false. And of course, we get a value of false. Now, you can use parentheses, just like you do in mathematical operations, to group together your logical operating checks. So the first thing we want to do is make sure that the user doesn't have a key. If they don't have a key, they can have gold or Another option would be to have a sword and armor together so that they could fight the guard, but they need both of those things. So in parentheses, I'm going to type sword and armor. This is going to cause Python to make three checks, essentially, three main checks with a subcheck. It's going to check sword and armor and return that to a single value of true or false. Sword is false, armor is false, so this expression evaluates to false, gold is currently false, and key is currently false, therefore this whole expression evaluates to false. The user's out there adventuring, and they happen to pick up a sword. The value of sword in their inventory is now equal to true. If I were to run this check again, key or gold or sword and armor together, it's going to evaluate the parentheses first, just like it would in math, and it's going to say sword and armor. Sword is equal to true now, but armor is equal to false, so that expression still evaluates to a single false, and we get key is false, gold is false, sword and armor is false, therefore we have false or false or false, since none of those equal true, the adventurer still can't get through the locked door.
through the adventure, the adventurer finds massive wealth by slaying monsters, and all of a sudden gold is equal to a value of true. So now the user has, we'll just recap the inventory, sword, they have a sword, armor, they do not have, gold is set to true, so they do have gold, and the key to the room is set to false. That's just four variables that are all set to true or false. Now I can say, does the user have a key, or gold, or sword and armor? We check the parentheses first. Sword and armor is equal to false. Gold is equal to true. Key is equal to false. So we say false or true or false. And the rules of the or statement, if one of the expressions evaluates to true, then this whole expression evaluates to true. And our user is able to get through the door. If we set gold back equal to false, and give the user some armor, true, key or gold or sword and armor, key is equal to false, gold is equal to false, but sword and armor together, since both are true, this whole expression in the parentheses evaluates to true, so we get false or false or true, and since one or more of the expressions evaluated to true, the user would still be able to get in that, past that city guard. So this is where we're going with this. This is the practical application, and we're using Boolean variables to note whether a player has access to something. This is a real simple programming technique that you'll use quite a bit. Not necessarily for inventories. There's better ways to do inventories. But you'll have variables like uh, to check to see, is a game running? Is the main menu currently shown? Does the user have the game paused? All these things are Boolean variables that you'll want to keep track of. Anything that's either on or off, true or false, ends up being a Boolean value. This example right here, I just I wanted to do something that was maybe just a little bit more fun, something that might give you some ideas for future games. There is no challenge program with Lesson 7.2. And it makes me a little uneasy to, to do this lesson just because of how out of context it is. Trust me, in Lessons 8 and Lessons 9, when we do while statements and if-then statements, the value of this will become just immeasurable. So stick with me. If you have any questions about the logical operators or assignment operators, comparison operators, go ahead and leave those in the comments. If you're working on any programs or you're trying to follow along and having problems, I will be more than happy to help you. Just go ahead and leave me a message and I'll make sure that we get everybody who's trying to work through these lessons uh, through. Thank you so much for watching. Look forward to seeing you in lessons eight and nine and have a great day.